it's bedtime. It's really nighttime too. I'm not making it up this time. I'm going to move the mic again. I'm always self-conscious that you can't hear me. Um, but yeah, it's bedtime, nighttime. Good night. I hope you had a great day. I know I, I did. I had a good day today and I'm feeling pretty happy. But tonight's bedtime talk, this one's a good one. I've, I've been saving it for special. Um, it is about uh, quantum physics. Yeah, metaphysics, quantum physics, quantum mechanics. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a blonde uses big words. And because I, I'm probably going to screw it up, I favorited a video from UCLA. It's the final lecture. It's number 20 in the lecture series. It's about 30 hours worth of lectures um, on science, magic, and religion. And I found that was a really cool lecture series. And if you're into those subjects, it can be a little dry at times, but I, I found it really fascinating. Going, It's a history, History 2D. It, it follows these things right up to present day. And I was really scared watching it towards the end because I'd already had a, a belief system that perhaps the human mind is more in control of things in a different way than I thought. And then, um, at the end, I thought, oh no, she's going to say it's all crap and people who think that's crazy and stuff, and, and, and that's going to be so disappointing. I've been watching this for almost 30 hours. But no, at the end, she said, yeah, you're not nuts. This is really going on. And I was like, yes, yes, quantum stuff is good. So here's the idea of this is where we make magic real. Okay, this is uh, fun to make magic real. I, I know I'm not going to do this right, so go ahead and, you know, look it up elsewhere, but just, just check this out for me for a minute, okay, because it is so cool. What should I start with? Let's start with photons, okay? This is where they get funky. Stay with me on this. This is real. Okay, if you take a photon, it's, it's a really, really small thing. Light, I guess, has that, right? And... They come in these little packets called quanta. Now, they can shoot these through a box that has a slit in it, and it can hit the back and make a mark. And this is where things get no way, really. Like, this is where it happens. Is, okay, they shoot one of these quanta packets through, and it makes a mark on the back you know, like an indent where it hit, and you say, well, what's exciting about that? Um, it'll do that if you look at it. If you do not watch it, it will just be like an energy wave, and it's not a particle at all. It's a wave. A wave of what? I don't know. It's just a wave. It's not a thing. So it's a solid object if you look at it, and it's just sort of an energy wave if you don't. And then they started firing like one and those two slits. And if you don't watch it, it it'll go through both. It'll be in two places at the same time if you don't pay attention to it. You have to watch it to make it be one. Because if you're not paying attention to these small things, they start doing things that have nothing to do with regular laws of nature that we think of because we have to watch them to make them pay attention which is weird but true now um, another thing that that gets weird with the small stuff is I guess electrons you can't you can't um, calculate how fast they're going and where they are at the same time you can know how fast they're going or where they are but not at the same time. But I guess also they do these things called quantum leaps, where an electron can go from point A to point C without ever visiting point B. It's just here, then it's there. Um, matter's not supposed to do that, but it does. And I, there's also stuff that where it gets really flippy, and I have a hard time bending my brain around this because I used to be such a left brain thinker. But um, they, uh, you can get these electrons being, or this matter and stuff, it, it, they're any time or place unless you look at them. 
and if you look at them, they'll behave and collapse into the reality they're supposed to be. But only if you do that. Got a cough. Sorry. <coughs> so that's weird. Um, so when you start getting into the really, really small stuff, it, it disappears and it isn't anything, or it is if you look at it, or it will be, um, two things will be in one place at the same time, or one thing will be at two places at the same time, and then you got stuff going from point A to point C without ever being in point B, and the only way you can get it to behave itself is to pay attention to it and expect it to. Um... A lot like kids, maybe. But this isn't parenting. This is about... Um, matter isn't what we think it is. And I think it's really freaky when you have to introduce mind into this. So you also get things on a larger scale where somebody gets some brine shrimps and they have distilled water. And if you put brine shrimps in distilled water, they explode and die a horrible death. So you take your brine shrimps and you take them out of the the brine solution and you put, they're all swimming around, just la 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 la, we're brine shrimps. And then you throw them into the distilled water and these ones, while they're dying a horrible death, the ones in the other jar start getting all excited and, and agitated because their buddies are dying and the scientists go, whoa, well, look, brine shrimps are psychic, but there's always some idiot who shows up with the next question. Well, not idiot, actually, some smart person who knows there has to be, a, there always has to be a next question. So, this person shows up and says, hey, you're looking at them. What happens if nobody's watching and a machine with nobody watching and a camera recording takes these and throws them in the... So, okay, they try that. So the brine shrimp, la, 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 and they take them out and they throw them in the distilled water and they die a horrible death and the other brine shrimps are still going, la, 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 we don't really care. So they're not psychic the brine shrimp are acting that way because you're looking at them and you're expecting them to. There's a lot of stuff like this. Like you can take a plant and hook it up to some kind of electric lie detector thing and if you look at the plant and say you're a horrible plant and I think you suck, there's no reaction. You can pick up a pair, you can take your hands and go like this at the plant and say I'm going to cut you because you're a plant and no reaction. You pick up a pair of scissors and you say, I'm going to start cutting your leaves off. No reaction. But the minute you go, you have the intention to start cutting the leaves off, the plant goes crazy. Now, electrically, it goes, ah, right, and screams. Why? Is it because the plant knows you're about to do that, or is it because you are looking at the plant and expecting it to? I don't know, but there's so many things about making matter happen out of energy. Um, and I don't fully understand all this, but it all has to do with mind, what you're looking at and what you're expecting. And I know it's not 100%. Um, scientifically, the odds are on this is 56% better chance. Hey, I'll take it, right? Better in a poke in the eye. But it's really amazing stuff, isn't it? And I'm going to hope I have time. I'm saying I do. Um, that here's another thing about if we knew how magically powerful we were, I think it might change the way some of us run our brains. Here's another thing about magic, how ridiculously magically powerful you are, is um, when you get up this morning, did you decide how you wanted the world to feel? I said, well, no, the world doesn't care how I feel. Wait, wait, no, wait, okay. Um, there's, a, there's a city, um, a small city in the States, uh, 35,000 people call it a town, and their whole job is just to be studied as some kind of sociology, psychology experiment. This is what they do. They go about their normal business, but they're just permanently studied because uh, people like to have a town to do that, and they volunteered. Very nice of them. Thank you. But they started studying what effect your mood has on other people, just how you feel. And it turns out that if I, and it doesn't matter how I look or act, if I feel angry or miserable, then 
I wiggle the mouse and I come back and tell you about it some more because you know I always do that at 10 minutes. But if I feel angry and miserable, it is going to affect that other person's mood that I have any contact with whatsoever, be it a person in the store, someone I talk to on the phone, whoever. It's going to affect their mood by a pretty big chunk. I can't remember the exact number. It's like some of 20, 40 percent, something like this, but it's very noticeable. And here's the thing, though, that carries through um, to four degrees of separation. So the next person that person comes in contact with, to a lesser extent, but it's still there, like 30% or something, their mood is going to be altered because that person had you. So you go, wow, that's pretty big, four degrees of separation. And here's when I watched this, what I thought, there's only seven degrees of separation in the world. And that's actual relationships, not people you run into the store, telemarketer, this sort of stuff. Um, so when you start adding in people you don't consider you have a relationship with, like people walking down the street. Um, I know when I walk down the street, I'm very looking around because I see the smiley people. We make eye contact. We know each other. We're like, hey, you're another one of those happy smiley people. You know, we smile at each other and then there's the other people who are busy or looking miserable or whatever. That's too bad. Anyway, so when I get up, I realize that my mood is going to affect, and this is before I even went on YouTube, but yeah, my mood is going to affect all these people I come in contact with through the day, through how many degrees of separation is, is really scary. And I got a feeling that we have an effect on like half the planet every day without knowing it. It's, it's about awareness, isn't it? If you knew that, uh, would you start learning some techniques to make you be able to adjust your mood? Because think about it. You'll say, well, I'm only hurting myself. And I don't mean to lay a guilt trip on anyone. But no, you're not only hurting yourself. And um, but it kind of makes you magic, doesn't it? If you can get up in the morning and know that what you're doing is going to rock half a planet before you even get in front of a camera, if that's what you choose to do. Um, but just, just by being. And that's magic. And I know that if you look at stuff, even a plant, and expect something, you get a reaction. What happens if you look at people and start looking at them and expecting them to be kind, loving, and wonderful. I'm not saying it's 100%. We all know I have a troll. But um, I know it's we're, I'm not the only one who's putting out energy in the world, so of course I'm affected by everybody else's energy and moods and, and their thoughts. What they are determining reality is also helping shape my reality. But knowing that I have the power to shape reality, and I have uh, the power to change how the world feels, even if it's just a vote um, in amongst all this other stuff, uh, it's a very powerful vote. Yes, it is. And I thought that was just interesting stuff, especially the stuff where matter starts not behaving. you got to remember what we're looking at here is 99.99999% empty space and then eventually it just becomes a wave. It's not really there. It's not real. It is just a perception in our minds, a very persistent perception, but just a perception just the same. And uh, yeah, so while we're being magic and molding reality, and uh, making the world our reality, our world, what we want it. Also, um, there's abundance and plenty, so we can... It's not like if I take all the happiness, I steal it from someone else. It's something that completely keeps flowing and, and breeding, and there is, there is no shortage in the world. There is no shortage of joy. There is no shortage of love. There is no shortage of happiness. Grab it, use it, pump it out. It can't be used up. And I think that's just... You see, I'm getting all...